Alright. Ah. Hello, Internet. These are the wheels of my giant content. These are Shimano RS wheels, and they are not tubeless. These require a tube. Recently, I installed a set of WTB Byway tires, and I did that because I wanted something that was a little more pavement friendly. These WTBs are tubeless, so I'm thinking, why not try and make these tube rims work with those tubeless tires and convert this to a tubeless setup. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try and make these work with a tubeless setup. I'm going to bring you along. Um, as I said, I've not done this before and if it works, I mean awesome. You'll know kind of how it went and if you've got a set of these Shimano wheels, you'll know how it goes. If it doesn't work, you could watch me make a, a big mess and you'll also know, hey, these Shimano wheels are not great for tubeless. I want to bring you to the bench and show you what materials I'm using for this. Uh, it's not a lot and I'm not using a kit, but I am using products that I've had good luck with on other bikes. So let's swing over to the bench, I'll show you what I'm using to do this. So this is all I think we'll need. I've got some tubeless sealant and I've got a big bottle of this because I use it in my other bikes. Um, it's Muckoff, I've had really good luck with them. I've got some tubeless tape. This tape is 25 millimeters wide. Those rims are 18. And so what I figure is this will be wide enough to wrap around and create a seal against where the bead sets. And then of course, one of those finishing stickers. I don't know if you really need this. It's probably a gimmick, but I've got it. So let's switch over. I'll uh, pull those tires off, get the tubes out of them, and then we'll wrap the rims with tape and we'll get things put together. So let's switch over and we'll do that. And these tires fit on this rim pretty loosely, which is a little concerning. I don't know how well that's going to seal, but we will see. Break the bead here so that these come off. Um, I'm not going to remove that blue rim tape. I'm just going to wrap over top of it. I don't think that'll be a problem. I mean, I guess I don't know, but that's what I'm going to try. Well, I sit here and I wipe this down. This, um, this rim tape, it's not fitting very tightly. And so the more I think about it, the more it makes me think that if I leave it here, the new tape won't adhere well to the rim and it'll create a leak path. So I think what I'm going to do is I actually think I'm going to cut this out, clean up just the rim, and then we'll put the rim tape directly against the rim. I'm just going to hold this between my knees. And I think I'm going to do three layers of tape. You know, like I mentioned, this, this tire fits a little loosely on this rim. And what I want to do is take out some of that. So I mentioned that this tape is quite a bit wider, wider than the rim. You can see how much, how much wider. So the way I'm going to fit it down in there is I'm going to pull it really tight. Right, that looks a little better. So now that I've got it started, I'm going to hold my thumb on it. And I'm going to pull it tight. And you'll hear that tape sort of stretch out of the rim. And I'll push it down as I go. We're going to work our way all the way around this rim. Kind of make sure that this tape is centered. And push down the other as we go. Alright, so that is one wrap. I'm going to go around and do two more. Make sure this is really well pressed in here. Alright, so that's three good layers. I'm going to snip this at a 45. And then pull it tight and push it in just like we've been doing.
The last little bit's kind of tough because you don't have the tension. So I'm going to go around with a rag now and I'm going to press the tape into the rim. Make sure that it's well adhered in the channel and that it's, it's firmly stuck where it wraps up the sides of the rim. So I usually just use a ballpoint pen to poke the hole in the rim tape for the valve stem. It's pretty straightforward. Once you know where that valve stem is, you just poke a hole. And this does a nice job because it, it sort of pushes the tape inside and creates a nice seal. And then I'm using, I don't know what brand these are. These are valve stems, tubeless stems that came with another set of wheels I have. So I don't know what brand they are, but I think they'll work. So I've got the, the hardware off. You can see there's a little rubber flappy that fits inside the hole. So I'm going to put that in there. Push it in until it seats. So I'm holding it down with my thumb and pushing in on it to compress it. And then I'm tightening down the nut as tight as I can get it with my fingers. So I think we're good here. The next thing we're going to do is put the tire on, put sealant in it, keep our fingers crossed that it beads. This tire I'm using does have a rotation arrow on it, so I have to make sure that I get that rotation arrow pointed in the right direction. So when this is on the bike, the uh, rotor is on the left hand side, which means it rotates this way. So I need to make sure that when I put the tire on, the arrow goes in the right way. So let's see where that arrow is. Alright, so it's here. It does point in this direction, so we're good. I'm going to line up the byway logo so it's kind of the valve stem. There's no real rhyme or reason for that. This rim has got three decals on it, so it's not like it's going to maintain any symmetry. So I'm going to push on that inside edge of the tire and work it around. So now I'm just going to go willy-nilly and I'm going to squirt in some sealant. And the bottle recommends 105 to 140 milliliters for a 29 mountain bike. So I think I'm going to put 100 for no good reason. But I think I'm going to put 100 milliliters in this tire. So I'm going to go around now and just squirt it in all the way around the tire until I get 100 milliliters. Let's see where I'm at. So now I'm going to start at the valve stem and I'm going to push the other side of the tire onto the rim. And I am making quite a mess. work my way around with my fingers until I get this tire stretched on. So now I'm going to hook up my air compressor and I'm going to set it to 60 pounds which is the max pressure for this tire and we're going to see if I can seat this bead. So there's 60 pounds in this hose and I'm using an adapter uh, so that I can use the Schrader valve end on my hose. Let's see what happens. There we go. And just keep the pressure on until I see the tire sit where it's supposed to all the way around. And that side looks good. I'll wipe off this extra sealant so that I can actually see what sort of air bubbles we have. And do this, ooh, I made a big mess on this side. Okay. And now what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna just roll the sealant around inside the tire so that it gets into that, where that bead sits in the rim and see if it'll seal up. So 
So I rolled the tire around, just doing this, slowly, each side, not long, maybe a couple of minutes each side. And it is sealed. I'm not getting any, any additional leakage. There are some pinholes in the sidewall where you can see the sealant has come through. That is not unexpected for this tire. When I looked online at some of the reviews, others had seen the same, same thing. So it looks like it's right where the sidewall meets the bead where they made that seam. So I've got pinhole sealant peeking through. But otherwise, you know, I think this looks okay. I'm gonna put it on the bike and I think I'm gonna take it for a ride and see how it holds up. Um, I may actually let it sit overnight before I do that. I don't know. I kinda wanna, I wanna try it out, right? I'm excited, but I'm also, I don't wanna walk. Uh, anyhow, I think that worked. So if you've got some of these Shimano RS wheels or their RX or any one of these basic Shimano wheel sets, um, it looks like you can convert them to tubeless. So with that, I'm gonna wrap this video up. Um, I hope you saw something here that you found useful or perhaps you were just entertained. Uh, if you did or you were, please leave a comment, let me know. I like reading those things and I do read all of them, uh, for good or bad. Also, would you consider subscribing to my channel? I really like doing this and seeing new subscribers, it just, it's real motivation. So anyhow, with that, I appreciate it. Thank you for watching.